And our guest for this segment is Dennis Schmidt from Sandia Aerospace. And Dennis, we've got uh, your new uh, Quattro instrument here. Tell us about this instrument and, and what's innovative about it. Well, I think the innovative thing is it um, was designed originally as a standby, but is also certified as a primary. Okay. So we give you altitude, uh, airspeed, slip, and attitude in one unit. Uh, it fits in an existing three-inch instrument hole. Mm -hmm. uh, can might be mounted from the front. It has a built-in battery that can give you up to two hours of standby operation. Mm -hmm. So if you're working with a Garmin or a, a Aspen system, this is a real good companion box in case something happens, it gives you a good standby operation. Uh, Installation is fairly simple. A little plate mounts to the front of the three-inch instrument hole. This connects to that, pedo, static, power and ground, and you're ready to go with it. So, so can uh, you show us some of the functionality of the instrument here yeah. on the, the demo that you brought? Sure can. You can so, turn that a little bit around towards the camera so yep, we can yep, see it. Yep. So what we have here is, it's on battery operation now. Actually mm -hmm. been operating on battery a little over two hours at this okay. point. Um, so, so, you so if it fuzzes out, we'll know why. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, probably won't, but... Um, uh, so, you got your pitch, uh, you got your roll, mm -hmm. we have our uh, altitude, we're pretty low right here, and then you also <laughs> can set your barrel uh -huh. for whatever the barrel happens to be. Okay. The barrel can be set up in a configuration to be done in either inches of mercury or in millibars. Mm -hmm. uh, our, our friends down in the Asia Pacific use millibars as opposed to inches of mercury. On the other side, we have our airspeed. I'll, I'll try to give you a little bit here since we're not moving. We have our airspeed. Mm -hmm. And the airspeed can be set up, again, in either knots or miles per hour, depending upon how your aircraft is set up mm -hmm. and what the ma manual says. I also have the slip. Now, we're not actually doing any yaw right. here, so it's going to show just basically mm -hmm. off of uh, uh, gravity. So, so what this basically does is take it takes a six pack and puts it into one instrument. That's that's well, it, it, not everything. You don't you don't get your DG off of it. Okay. But, but it, it does do the rest of that. And so um, we have quite a backlog. Um, been fun coming here and getting pounded to death because we're not <laughs> delivering fast enough. But we're trying to pick that that up now. But it's been been well received out in the marketplace. So is it for certified aircraft or does it also go to the EAB market? It was really designed originally for certified aircraft as a standby instrument. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw a big need there and we came out with one that was you know, price effective. Uh, we began our deliveries last November, last October, right before deliveries. The FAA came out with a policy statement stating that you could re remove a vacuum attitude indicator mm -hmm. with an electronic and ADI if it fit in the same location mm -hmm. and if it had a backup battery that was separate from the starting battery, Okay. which we have. And if you really look at this from the side, this whole section that sticks out the back is mm -hmm. the battery. Okay. All the electronics are from this point forward, so fairly small. The nice thing about it, if the battery has to be replaced, it can be removed from the front of the aircraft, two screws. Mm -hmm. Replace the battery. You do not have to break your pedostatic lines and put it back in, so it won't require a re uh, check on the static line. And where does it take its charge from to, to be rechargeable? Mm -hmm. So when you're in the aircraft, uh, you, actually for the installation, you got pedostatic, power, and ground. Okay. So in normal operation, it is ch charging all the time off the aircraft system. Mm -hmm. If you were to lose electrical power, it automatically reverts to uh, battery. So it's, it is charging off the aircraft system. Are you seeing in the industry kind of a, a shift towards more of these smaller, all-in-one, for lack of a better term, instruments that where, particularly where cockpit space is limited? Yeah, we are. Uh, one of the things is it gives you it frees up room to put other instruments in. And as avionics manufacturers, we love to have room to put other avionics in. Absolutely. But putting it all together in one display really lowers the workload because you don't have such a varied scan. So mm -hmm. we have it right in front of you. 
Um, so we can give a lot of information off of one instrument. And so we're seeing a lot more of that. And actually you could put dual in if you really wanted mm -hmm. to and, and still have, use less space than you do in a traditional six pack. You know, we've been talking to a lot of folks here at this show in, in the avionics industry because the, the part 23 rewrite is, is finally published. Uh, it's open for comments. And we're asking folks kind of where they see that taking, um, taking the industry in terms of changes in certification rules. For an instrument like yours that you've gone to the process of having certified, where, where is your stance on changing those rules to bring more instruments into the fold into certified cockpits? Well, I've been in the industry for a long time. Tell by the hair. <laughs> and it was the gravelly voice that gave it away. Yeah, now. right. <laughs> so the certification is a lot of work. We do a lot of environmental testing through DO 160, a lot of certification on the software through DO 178. The FAA is a safety organization, mm -hmm. and I'm one that really believes in those regulations. They uncover a lot of problems. And I think that if you can start installing equipment in the aircraft without going through that, mm -hmm. you're going to open up a chance of errors. Um, our facility, we're an FAA approved manufacturing facility. We, get, we, get, we have our quality manual. We have to follow it. It is approved by the FAA and they inspect us. Uh, so we have to do everything right. We can't just make a change. Yes, it is cumbersome at times, but it is also ensure safety in the system. I, I believe in it. I, I believe it gives you a much better product. And um, so non-certified equipment, particularly in areas that are important, like attitude, mm -hmm. I'm concerned about it. And. Maybe not so much non-certified, but from my understanding of what is in the Part 23 rewrite, is it's still a certification process, right. but it's to a standards based um, as opposed to the, the the way it is now. Yeah, and that if the standards are written right, I think that's fine. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of depends which way the FAA goes with that, what those standards do. So I think most of us are looking forward to the rewrite, mm -hmm. but it kind of depends on which direction it really ends up. Right. And with the FAA, we're never really quite sure. I think the other thing that you were alluding to without coming out and saying it was the uh, announcement by EAA and uh, right. Dynon at Sun and Fun right. about the Dynon panel going into certified aircraft. And, and I'm getting the impression that you, you're maybe not quite convinced that's the best road to go down. I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm not just from the fact as that is, if you, you keep it in a VFR situation where the guy can look out the window at the horizon, that's mm -hmm. okay. You start putting in an instrument condition, yeah, you better make sure you got the right software. I'll go to a thing. I, most of us all have a cable network TV. Correct. I do too, and I've got the little DVR box up there mm -hmm. that every three weeks I have to reboot it because it locks up and it doesn't do things right. Right. It would never pass in, uh, under an FA scrutiny. <laughs> and so I think those things are important. I don't want a blue screen of death on my computer happening in, in the aircraft. So I think those things are important. Our operating software is open to review by the FAA, mm -hmm. and we do a lot of testing on it. And I think that is really important. You know, safety in the aircraft is critical. When you start looking at an instrument like the like the Quattro, it's it's compact. It packs a lot of features into a into a small uh, into a small package. Yep. So where is the innovation coming from now? How how much further can you go as you get smaller, lighter, um, and more powerful software into these instruments? You can go quite a ways. On this one, obviously, we actually even have a magnetometer in it. We don't have it turned on now, but it'll give us heading. Mm -hmm. um, so it almost does take the place of the DG. It could. <laughs> uh, one of the things is you got to watch how much information you pack into it. It's still got to be able to be interpreted and mm -hmm. being able to seen and picked up fairly easy. I, I, I used to work for King Radio in my early days, and we had a uh, 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 glide slope receiver. And it was so small at that time, we just didn't think anything would get this smaller. But we had to make it bigger because we couldn't put the, the ID tag on it. Mm -hmm. And that, was, that, that, that limited it. 
I think to some degrees, how much can you see? Uh, what's the visibility? You know, sort of like your phone. You know, I remember 15 years ago, they said phones were going to get smaller. They'll be the size of a pen. Mm -hmm. They actually got bigger because yes. we do more with them. And so we need that visibility on it. So I believe, yeah, we can put the DG in here. It might be better to put it out externally. But the, but going to the phone analogy, now the phone will tether to a watch, which right. gives you some of the data, right. um, but doesn't have the full functionality. Right. Is, is that in, on the horizon for avionics, do you think? Oh, absolutely. If you look at ADS-B today, mm -hmm. and we're also doing an ADS-B solution with built-in transponder. Um, and we show traffic on our display, but if somebody wants an iPad, then not, not approved, but we'll Bluetooth out to it. Mm -hmm. A little bit bigger display, gives you weather, gives you traffic, so you're going to see those things happening. But I'm not so sure I'd want to uh, certify my iPad. It would make it cost a lot more. It would make it cost a lot more, and they're going to have to do the software differently. Mm -hmm. How so? You don't want it to lock up on you while you're traveling. Well, there is that. Yep. Well, Dennis, really appreciate you taking some time to talk with us today. Uh, it's a nice little instrument. Uh, sounds like you've got um, got quite a following for it. Now, I'm assuming it's for fixed and rotary wing. Are you fixed and rotary wing? We do have it. We didn't actually certify it for helicopters, although we do have them in some helicopters. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really up for the aircraft up through 35,000 feet. Okay. And so. We're doing very well. We got a big backlog to your audience that are, are waiting for them. <laughs> We're working real diligently to get caught up, but uh, mm -hmm. we will get there shortly. It's it's a it's probably a good problem to have and not a good problem to have well, all at the same time. You don't want people having their aircraft on the ground waiting for a product. So from that aspect, it's bad. But I'd rather have a backlog than have units waiting for an order. Exactly. So. Well, let me let you get back to work then, Dennis. Thanks very I'll, much I'll for helping it. us out today. Thank you. Aero News Network's coverage of the 59th Annual AEA International Convention and Trade Show, live from Orlando, Florida, is brought to you in part by the following sponsors. Are you stall smart? Ever since Orville and Wilbur took to the skies, pilots have been taught that the more airspeed you have, the better off you are. But over the last 100 plus years, we've learned that's not always the case. Take stalls, for example. The common belief is that if you have sufficient airspeed, the aircraft won't stall. The fact is, an airfoil always stalls at the same critical angle of attack in relation to the relative airflow, regardless of airspeed, configuration, or weight. Learn more at AspenAvionics.com.